Welcome to the Casual Birder Podcast. I'm Susie Buttress. As a casual birder, I take time to watch birds as I go about my daily tasks. In my show, I'll tell you about the wild birds I've seen, speak with other enthusiasts, take bird walks, and share stories from listeners around the world. It's episode 75, and it's March 2020, and life has suddenly changed for all of us. You tell me that you listen to this show because it's calming and you enjoy hearing the bird walks and interviews. For this episode, I will start by talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, but then I'll move on to talk about some of the casual birding that we've all been doing recently. All my other episodes will focus on my usual topics and won't mention the virus, unless there's a special reason to do so, and I'll mark that episode accordingly. If you want to avoid hearing about the current crisis, please jump to 1130 where you can hear about our casual birding experiences. It's hard to believe how much things have changed for us all in the last month, even over the last week, and how it continues to change on a daily basis. We are currently in a lockdown, and we're all trying to find our new normal. We might be feeling so many strong negative emotions right now. If you are feeling overwhelmed by your emotions, please seek direct help from your healthcare provider. And also... Please look for the latest information on best practice during this crisis from official sources, such as government websites and the World Health Organisation. The guidance, as of today, 29th of March 2020, for my location in southern England, is that we must not leave our homes unless it's to get basic provisions and to take one session of exercise a day. Parks and nature areas are now closed and a distance of six feet or more must be maintained from people that you don't live with. This is a fast-evolving situation And the best practice when you hear this episode may have changed, so please do check with the relevant authorities in your area before going outside. I'm currently well and practising social distancing. I truly hope you are staying safe and well too. I know how fortunate I am to be able to work from home and to have a garden so that I can continue to watch birds. For those of us without outside spaces, the internet has helped us all remain connected I'm grateful for all the people providing resources and ideas for bringing birds and nature into our lives while we have to stay inside our homes. Some of the ideas that I have particularly noted that you can do while in lockdown or self-isolating are watch the birds in your garden or outside your window and share your sightings with others. The RSPB has started a daily breakfast bird watch taking place on social media from 8am to 9am each weekday morning. The idea is to create a friendly, supportive and engaged community where people can share what they see from their gardens, balconies or windows while complying with the government regulations relating to COVID-19. The RSPB reminds us that with the arrival of spring, there's so much incredible nature returning, blooming, growing and thriving outside. And while we're in the middle of a crisis, we mustn't forget how watching nature can be so positive for our mental health and well-being. With reserves closed and outdoor activities limited, taking notice of the natural world on our doorsteps is more important than ever. I've been taking part in the Breakfast Birdwatch each morning and posting my sightings on Twitter using the hashtag Breakfast Birdwatch. And while talking about friendly, supportive and engaged communities, I'd like to give a really big thank you and shout out to the Casual Birder Podcast Facebook group. We have members from around the world and hearing about the birds we are all seeing is truly wonderful. It's a really friendly group, and while we do have some amazing photographers and artists in the group, I encourage us all to tell about our sightings and post our photographs. Really, it's all about the enthusiasm of what we're seeing. Do come and join us if you are on Facebook. If Twitter or Instagram is more your thing, tag me in your posts about the birds you see. I love hearing from you, but if you don't tag me, I might not see your post. Also on Twitter and Facebook is the newly formed Self-Isolating Bird Club at SI Bird Club on Twitter, led by Chris Packham, which provides somewhere to share about the birds you see from your home. It's a really large group, again with members from all over the world, so you will hear about all kinds of birds. I've started interacting in the Facebook group and there are so many lovely stories, photos and art pieces from people who love birds and nature. Do check it out. Something else you can do while in lockdown is learn more about identifying the different bird species. Take a look at the RSPB, the British Trust for Ornithology, the Audubon Society or the Bird Academy by the Cornell Lab for Ornithology. 
Use the resources found online to learn more about how to birdwatch and how to identify individual species. You can challenge yourself with the birds found in your own location or maybe learn about birds from other countries. Some sites also have games to play which are great for the younger birdwatcher. The Bird Academy also has a range of paid courses to further increase your birding knowledge. And why not think about creating an eBird list of your sightings? There's a free tutorial about eBird on the Cornell Lab website. Past guest Lev Parikian has created a wonderful resource of bird song and observations to enable you to learn about UK birds. Find it at levparikian.com. And I'll put all the links in the show notes. Dan Rouse, my guest from episode 72, has been busy creating videos and Instagram stories about the nature around us. Do look at her Instagram account, at Dan Rouse, and uh, I know she's got lots of things planned coming up. Another thing you can do in lockdown, listen to podcasts. Obviously, I would say that, but there are lots of wonderful animal, nature and birding podcasts available, and some of them are particularly suited to listening with youngsters, such as Varmints, Amazing Wildlife and Cool Facts About Animals. I've created a few lists of recommended podcasts at podchaser.com. One's for just birds, a list of gardening podcasts and a bumper list of all the podcasts I recommend of all genres. If there are any animal or nature podcasts that you listen to that aren't on my list, let me know. I often share these lists on Twitter and it's a great way for letting more people know about the shows. And feel free to share my lists too. Watching nesting birds via a webcam gives you an intimacy you wouldn't otherwise receive. There are loads out there, particularly on birds of prey like peregrines, osprey and eagle nest cams. And uh, I've put a couple of suggestions in the show notes. There's the peregrine webcam that's at the Nottingham Trent University and Lock Garten has an osprey nest cam as well. If you're like me, your photo files need some housekeeping. Take some time to sort out those old photographs of birds and wildlife. Apart from helping you to reclaim some space on your drives, it's lovely to reminisce about the trips we've made and the birds we've seen. And you might find some lifers you didn't know you had, as I did recently when reviewing some photos from my trip to the South Atlantic in 2014. And you can share those online as well. If you've found any enjoyable birding pastimes that can be done from inside your home that I haven't mentioned, do tell me about them. For me, and I know for a lot of you too, being aware of the natural world Watching birds and the seasonal changes that happen brings a lot of comfort, inspiration and enjoyment. You may remember from a couple of episodes ago that Hannah from the podcast Hannah and Eric Go Birding was due to go to Israel for the Champions of the Flyway Challenge. Well, here's an update on that. Hey Susie, this is Hannah from Hannah and Eric Go Birding. Thank you so much for giving me a few more minutes to talk about myself like I like to do. Um, So... I announced uh, in one of your previous episodes that I was going to be part of a Champions of the Flyway team. Um, Our team name was the Women in Step. And the Champions of the Flyway is a competition that takes place each year in Elat, Israel, in which teams um, go on a 24-hour trip around the state of the country and (laughs) look for as many species as they can. And um, that's done to fundraise for a conservation project. And this year's conservation project was for the steppe eagle, which breeds in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan and faces a lot of strife on their breeding grounds. And so we're raising funds to help protect them. However, with the COVID-19 crisis that's currently happening throughout the world, uh, we're not able to travel to Israel. However, we do have a few teammates that are in Israel. Lydia and Alen do live there. And then myself, I live in Oregon. And one of my team members, uh, Amy, lives in Texas. And uh, the last one, Lisa, lives in Boston. And what we decided to do was invite all women on our team. Not only was this um, just a fun time to engage with a bunch of other wonderful birders, but we were also planning to be the first international all-women's team to compete in this competition. And so what we want to do now is invite all women to be a part of our team. So on March 31st, no matter how much time you have or where you can go, please, please, please um, bird. Get out there and bird. And 
do an eBird list and share it with women in step. And hopefully we can get as many birds as we can for women to see them and just get people out and engage. This is a crazy time and we want everyone to, to have a little bit of joy in their life. But please make sure you're doing it safely. And we will also be sending out more information as we get closer to the event. If you would please sign up on our website, Eric and my website is gobirdingpodcast.com. I sent up a whole new page on it called the Global Women's Big Day um, that will have additional information. So please sign up there and we'll send out information as we get closer. Of course, things are changing every day. Um, so please sign up there or follow us on our social media and we will get you the most up-to-date information as well as how many people are participating and where across the world they're doing it. So I'm so excited that we could um, at least get this going. And I look forward to seeing all the eBird lists that roll in and all the women that are participating. So thank you so much and stay safe and healthy, everyone. I'm going to take part in the Global Women's Big Day, even though I can only conduct the birdwatch from my garden. But join us and be part of something global. Sign up on their website at gobirdingpodcast.com or visit championsoftheflyway.com to join one of the other virtual teams. While I've been working from home, it's been lovely to be able to look out of my window and see my garden birds and hear them calling throughout the day. I've tried to get out into the garden at lunch times, but not always successfully, as it's too easy to stay sitting down at the computer all day. However, I don't work on Wednesdays, and last Wednesday I stayed out in the garden all day long. It was a glorious spring day, starting off with a frost and a clear blue sky. I began by taking part in the RSPB's breakfast bird watch, mentioned earlier. I sat in my summer house so that I could be closer to the birds and to give my husband some space while he worked. It was freezing out there, but I was wrapped up warm with my quilted jacket and a rug on my lap. I was so busy trying to share the photos on Twitter of the birds I was seeing that my porridge and coffee went cold before I could enjoy them. During that hour, I saw three wood pigeons, goldfinch, robin, dunnock, blackbird, great tit, blue tit, magpie and collared dove, all single birds, apart from the three wood pigeons. As the sun came into the garden, I moved my chair outside. I realised that might keep some of the birds away, but the blackbird and dunnocks continue to wander around the end of the garden furthest from me. They never really seem to care much. I noticed a blackbird heading to one of the water bowls and managed to take a lovely video of it bathing, which of course I posted online. Several times I noticed rooks fly over the garden, but they wouldn't come in while I was sitting there. At one point, I heard some croaky chattering behind me and I saw a rook was sitting on top of next door's roof. I love hearing them seeming to just chatter to themselves. Later, when it got too hot to sit in the sun with my PC, I moved back into the summer house. Almost immediately, three rooks came into the garden. They must have been watching. I think they were flying over every now and then and then as soon as I left the garden, they came straight in to eat the suet nibbles that I'd put out. At one point, there were five rooks in the garden. While watching them, I heard a strange calling, sort of like a distress call, but not quite. I looked up in the air and there were two red kites harassing a buzzard, possibly one of the four buzzards I've seen soaring over my garden recently. I managed to film a short segment and I'll post these on my website and YouTube channel if you'd like to see them. I had a fabulous day just sitting out with the birds until the cool of the late afternoon. And as you know, that's one of my most favourite ways to spend a day, sitting out in a garden just watching what birds turn up. On Friday, one of the rooks came into the garden and sat on the deck rail outside the kitchen window. Last year, a rook visited regularly. It would land on the deck rail, then come up to the kitchen window to show itself, and I would throw suet pellets outside the back door that only it would eat. It therefore gained an advantage over the other birds in the garden in that it didn't have to compete for this food. I joked then that it had trained me well. Well, for the last two days, a rook has come back to the garden and done exactly the same behaviour. I'm convinced it's the same rook from last year. It even leaves the garden in a very set routine where it flies to a particular part of the deck rail before flying off with the food stored in its throat pouch. I've read that rooks are early nesters and so it's most likely taking the suet back for its young. Even though I know the crow family are intelligent, 
I think it's amazing that the rook remembers our routine from last year. Thank you all so much for sharing your bird sightings with me. Heidi from the Vibrant Visionaries podcast sent me this recording. Hey Susie, this is Heidi of the Vibrant Visionaries podcast and I wanted to let you know what I've been up to over here in the East Bay of California. So I live in Oakland, California and I visit the island city of Alameda quite a bit. My dog Pokey and I like to take long walks across the shore And there's actually these lovely little inlets and lagoons, and we go wander around there too. And there's plenty of little shorebirds about, so I thought I'd tell you about what we've seen. We often see Canada geese, definitely our fair share of a variety of ducks. We see coots and snowy egrets. The snowy egrets are quite beautiful. I shared a video with you. Perhaps you can share that with your listeners. Black-necked stilts are also out and about. We've got black crows. Of course, just good old gulls. Every once in a while, I see a great blue heron and brown pelicans, and that's a lot of fun. I love seeing the pelicans out and about. And then if I'm over visiting Sacramento, which is just about an hour away from here, they actually have quite a lot of wild turkeys, and you'll just see them walking down the street. I think if you Google turkeys in downtown Sacramento, you can find out more about that. But I was uh, visiting family there and just saw a turkey strolling down the sidewalk. It was pretty hilarious. So the other thing that happened the other day was Pokey and I were walking along the shoreline and we saw a seal. And I haven't seen a seal over in Alameda looking out across uh, the bay to San Francisco. But I saw a little face pop up And it was staring right at me and it bobbed in the water a bit and looked at me and I looked at the seal and then it turned around and swam away. It was just amazing. So um, yeah, just uh, taking time right now with the lockdown here in the Bay Area to go out and spend time in nature and really take in all the tranquility and the beauty of life. And I hope you all will do the same. Thanks for letting me contribute to the podcast. Again, this is Heidi from the Vibrant Visionaries podcast. Ciao for now. Do take a listen to Heidi's podcast. Vibrant Visionaries presents inspiring unscripted conversations with artists, writers, comedians and other performers about their projects, processes and lessons learned along the way. And it's applicable to all of us. But it's fascinating hearing those conversations. And Zoe from Tea and Strumpets podcast has been seeing hooded orioles. Hey there, this is Zoe from Tea and Strumpets podcast, which is a podcast about historical romance novels, but I'm here in my backyard and you can probably hear a kind of noise in the background and that is a hooded oriole. They migrate here this time of year and I can hear him clicking away. He's mad because I came outside and he had to leave the uh, sugar feeder that we have out for him. But yeah, we've got a lot of other birds in the backyard right now for springtime. I can see two hummingbirds sitting near each other, a male and a female in the tree, but we get all sorts. I am in San Diego, California, but the hooded orioles are orange and black, the males, and kind of yellowish, the females, and they're just really cool when they come by and they're attracted to palm trees and orange the color so we set out these special larger orange feeders for them around this time of year and we usually get a couple nests in the palm trees near us so we're pretty lucky anyhow just wanted to share that with y'all and love the podcast thanks so much zoe it was just over a year ago that we were in mexico and i watched the hooded orioles on that day that i sat in the garden of the cottage where we were staying I released the recordings that I made in episode 61, Backyard Birds in Baja, California. As I said earlier, our Facebook group is really active and there have been some wonderful sightings reported recently. Here are a few of them and they're all presented with the permission from the authors. Jeff wrote, It's a beautiful sunny day here in Serbia. Stepped outside to collect some firewood and heard a crow calling anxiously. Looked up to see it chasing an eagle dashed in to grab my bins and managed a short view as it made off, pursued by the relentless crow. 
immediately dismissed white-tailed eagle as it didn't have the huge bill or wedge tail, which, based on its structure and pale tawny wing coverts, only leaves the possibility of a lesser spotted eagle. Alas, I could not tick it based on such short views. Exciting to see an eagle nonetheless, and a great start to the day. Gustavo took an early morning walk near Dublin and saw a few common eiders, unusually close to the shore. He said there were about 20 birds in total, most of them males. And Jessica from near Melbourne recently wrote about an exciting casual birding experience she had when out for a run. She said, Went out in the morning, advantage of being home this week, and decided to take a route through a green grassy lane between houses, down to a park, then along the creek and back home. I saw the usual assortment of magpies and red wattle birds, a small flock of sulphur-crested cockatoos, about ten, flying, and several solo cockatoos as well. The exciting birds were eight to ten eastern rosellas, who were feeding in trees backing onto the green lane. As I ran along, they kept moving to trees ahead of me. I often see a pair roaming in my neighbourhood, but I've never seen that many before. Their colours lit up the grey morning. And then further down, as I crossed the creek... I saw a bird of prey circling rather low. I was so excited watching it that I nearly missed the pallets that someone had put down to cross the creek. Thank goodness I didn't. I hate running with wet shoes and socks. I paused my running programme once I was safely across and just watched it. It disappeared, but then I saw it launch off from a tree. The cloudy weather meant I didn't get the best look at the colours. But from poring over my field guide, I think it might have been a black kite based off size and tail shape. Kept running along the path next to the creek, spotted more magpies and a grey butcher bird. And the final very exciting thing was in a gum tree at the top of some stairs were ten gangang cockatoos. I stopped and looked at them for ages. Even though the males have red, really a more peachy orange head, they were hard to spot in the tree. Their grey feathers are edged with white yellow, especially around the tail, which means they blend in really well with the foliage. The females have a grey head and red edging to the feathers on their chest. They kept shuffling around in the tree, totally ignoring me, and merrily dropping gum nuts on the car parked underneath. It was the ping of the dropped nuts that alerted me to their presence. Wow, what a really eventful mix of casual birding and exercise. That's amazing. Thanks so much, Jessica, for sharing that. So in the Facebook group, we've been carrying out some 30-minute bird watches and sharing the results. Mary Rose said... We did this and saw lots of pairs, two Carolina wrens, two house finches, two northern cardinals, three downy woodpeckers, one red-bellied woodpecker, three American robins, two dark-eyed juncos, one song sparrow, one tufted titmouse, one black-capped chickadee, one morning dove, one European starling, and we heard one northern flicker. That was all in New Jersey. That was an amazing number of birds to see in half an hour. And Karin from Finland posted... My 30-minute bird watch produced the grand total of one blue tit, one great tit, three tree sparrows and a hooded crow flying over. It's a quiet, clear day here with a few areas still covered with snow and ice. There is interest in the nest boxes though and the tits have been picking at a huge bundle of cat fur I put out in the garden. Cats not attached to the bundle, of course. When I did my bird watch last weekend, um, I watched for 20 minutes before a bird even turned up in the garden. And then I had blue tit, great tit, two magpies and a blackbird. Hardly anything at all. But it just depends sometimes on when you choose your half an hour. Jenny from Queensland said, Here's our list from our walk this morning. Australian magpie, sulphur-crested cockatoo, crows, welcome swallow, grey-crowned babblers, apostle birds, peaceful dove, kookaburra, pheasant kukul. And Jessica also posted today... Instead of a 30-minute garden bird watch, I decided to take advantage of the easing of the rain we'd had all day to take a bird walk instead. My bird walk took me through a green path between houses, down to the local creek, and then along the other side of the creek to a walking path home. It took me a bit longer than 30 minutes. Uh, stopping to note down the birds meant walking a lot slower than usual, so I only took strict notes for the 30 minutes. After that time elapsed, I did see a few extra species, two crimson rosellas and two masked lapwings, and a female superb fairy wren watched me wash the mud off my shoes from the fence outside my laundry door. A walk along dirt paths after a day of showers was not perhaps the smartest route to take. It did mean I was outside when the clouds finally cleared, and I finished my walk in the warm autumn sunshine. Instead of listening to music or a podcast like I usually do, 
I decided to enjoy the sound of nature, the sounds of the breeze through the trees and the many varied bird songs. It alerted me to the presence of birds I wouldn't otherwise have noticed. The bird walk started in the afternoon and the birds seen were ten red wattle birds, four magpie larks, also known as peewees, five New Holland honey eaters, eight sulphur-crested cockatoos flying over in a large group, eight magpies, four rainbow lorikeets, two snuggled up together in a tree and two chasing other birds, one gang-gang cockatoo chased by lorikeets, though I heard others, three eastern rosellas, five common minor, two currawongs, though I could hear many more singing, four ravens, five laughing turtle doves, could hear more softly cooing in the trees around the creek, two crested pigeons and six Pacific black ducks. I don't know if it was the autumn sunshine, but all the birds were singing their hearts out today and many more were merrily speeding through the air. Honestly, Jessica, that is just so wonderful. That 30 minute bird walk, all those birds that you saw and heard. And absolutely, that's the sort of thing I like to do. I don't like to listen to podcasts or music when I'm outside because I want to listen for what birds are out there. Last episode... I started a new section called Last Call and this is a segment of around five minutes of bird song and calls recorded by me in various locations around the world. You can find it after the end credits. This week's segment is the dawn calls recorded from my garden in Hampshire on March the 19th. If you enjoy these segments and would like to hear longer ones released as separate episodes, do let me know. So do tell me about the birds you've seen recently. I really do love to hear about them. You can join the Facebook group, as I mentioned earlier. You can find us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash casual birder podcast. There is a page as well that you can follow, but the group is where everything happens. The group is more active. Like the page, that would be great because that helps other people find the show. But uh, if you want to actually interact with us, you need to join the group. Each Wednesday, I post a fun bird ID quiz on all of my social media channels. Do look out for it. Sometimes it's birds that I've taken photos of. Other times it's contributions from listeners. Um, But do take a look. I try to vary the birds that I post. I try to vary it between European birds and birds from the US and Canada. And if you're not sure about the bird, or I always say which region it is, if it's a region that isn't your region, use it as an opportunity to do some detective work and have a look online. Get a feel for what sort of bird shape you think it is or what kind of bird you think it is. And just learn a bit more about other birds. I've been learning facts about these birds that I don't think I would normally have found out. Things like, you know, what makes them stand out from other birds that look similar. Because when I'm sharing the photographs, I try to put clues in the photographs so that you can actually solve it. Sometimes I put out birds that I think are really difficult and everyone solves it really, really quickly. So you never know. But do take part. It's a fun thing to do. And... um, If you get it right, I put a little icon, uh, a little trophy icon in the tweet to show that you you got it. Follow me on Twitter at CasualBirderPod or on Instagram at CasualBirderPodcast. Like you heard from Zoe and Heidi this week, use your phone and just record a little bit about the birds you're seeing. Most phones have got a recording app. You can just email me the file and email me at CasualBirderPod at gmail.com. And uh, if I can, I'll use it in the show. Don't forget to say your first name and what country or city you're in, but you don't have to be too specific. It's just to get an idea of what region you're in. And do visit my website at casualbirder.com, where I am trying to update now the blogs of things that I've seen and videos and photos that I'm taking. Make sure you don't miss any episodes by subscribing to the show. Subscribing is free and you can do it wherever you listen to it. You can follow me on podchaser.com and you can find out about the list of shows that I recommend. Thank you to Randy Braun for designing the artwork for the show. The theme music is Short Sleeve Shirt by The Drones. Thanks to them for letting me use it. Check out their website at dronesmusic.net. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you'll join me again for another episode of the Casual Birder podcast. Last Call Last Call This Week is a recording of the Dawn Chorus made from my garden in Hampshire, UK on the 19th of March between 7 and 7.30am. It was drizzling with rain and so you will hear some drops of water falling from a nearby roof and there is an occasional rumble of traffic. 
The main birds heard are blackbird, robin, song thrush, dunnock and wren. I hope you enjoy hearing it. 